Uh, standing by now in Lviv is uh, BBC News producer and correspondent Joe Inwood. Joe, once again, great seeing you this morning. Let's talk about the latest that's happening in Ukraine, specifically Mariupol. Um, what is the latest on these evacuations that are supposed to be resuming? So we have 100 or so people who got out yesterday. Uh, we know that they came out in a number of groups, mostly women, the elderly, and they were greeted by United Nations and Red Cross staff, as well as Russian soldiers. They were then loaded onto buses and taken to a town to, towards the east of Mariupol. Now, that caused some concern at first, because one of the red lines for the Ukrainians was that they would be able to go to Ukrainian territory. But once they were processed there in the east, they were, we understand, according to President Zelensky, taken back and started the long journey to the town of Zaporizhia, Zaporizhia being in Ukrainian territory. Now, this has all been kept quite under wraps. They haven't been providing a running commentary on this, but our understanding is that they are en route there now, and we should be expecting to see that first group arriving in Zaporizhia later today. Now, in terms of future releases, I think it's going to depend on how successful this has all seemed to have been. And at the moment, it does look like it's going to plan, and that would mean that there is a greater chance that the remaining civilians tra trapped in the Azovstal plant, 900 or so, well, they might be able to get out too. Well, this is the first sort of organized evacuation that has been successful in a really long time. The UN was involved. The Red Cross was involved. Uh, how much does this have to do with the UN Secretary General visiting Vladimir Putin uh, last week? Mm. I think it's first worth us reflecting on what is a genuine diplomatic success for the United Nations. Mm. I think they've come in for quite a lot of criticism. They were criticised for arranging the visit so it started in Moscow and then went to Kyiv. But they have achieved something which I think we probably thought they wouldn't. They've negotiated a ceasefire between these two sides in what has been the most brutal area of this conflict. Two sets of soldiers that have a, a mutual loathing for each other and somehow they have stopped that fighting. Um, exactly how it happened, well, the honest truth is, we don't know. One of the things I think that's characterized this negotiation, as opposed to the ones that have come before, the ones that have failed, is that there wasn't a running commentary. We didn't have continuous updates on when it was happening and then when it didn't. So they've kept it under wraps, but what we do know is it's been something of a success. And in regards to the war, how are things going for Russia and Ukraine in the eastern part of the region? It, it seems like, you know, Russia is sort of struggling to, I guess, uh, maintain a stronghold in the area. I guess not, a, not maintain a stronghold, but it seems like Ukrainian forces have been able to carve back, you know, little pieces of, of the eastern part. Yeah, I think it depends. It's a very, it is a variable picture. Um, I'm sure your viewers will know that we had sort of the first stage of the war, as it was referred to, this lightning assault on Kyiv. That was foiled. We're now into the second stage, the, the more grinding artillery-based section of the, of the conflict in this area called the Donbass. And the Russians are really committing forces. They're bringing in heavy artillery, large numbers of soldiers, of conscripts as well. And actually, they are having, I think, some, but very, very limited success. Uh, the Ukrainians have spoken to the BBC about this, they've told us they are taking losses, they are losing men because of this f form of warfare that the Russians go for, of huge artillery barrages, heavy rockets, that kind of thing. There's only so much you can do to withstand it. But the Ukrainians are well dug in, they're well equipped, thanks in part to equipment from the United Kingdom and the United States, and they are doing their best to hold on. They are having to concede some ground, but they are extracting a very, very heavy price from the Russians for doing so. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Always a pleasure talking to you.